In this tutorial we are going to learn how to input text into Muse score. You won't hear the playback to different pieces. There are many elements in a piece such as measure number, tempo, dynamics, part name, etc. that look like pieces of text and can be changed to different text styles. Other elements such as the time signature, the little number under the first, second, or third ending that looks like a piece of text has a fixed style that cannot be changed. If you used an earlier version of Muse Score, you will see the menu option create on top. In this version you will find the different text options under Add. Some of the features we will talk about later in the tutorial such as fingering can be found under the palette. The first topic we will cover is inserting the title, subtitle, and copyright info into a score. When you create a new score, these are some of the things you can input as pieces of text. We open a piece without a title and add one in. We see a big space on top with a dotted blue rectangle. In Muse Score, this is a frame which will not be shown on a paper copy or in the compiled version. We will discuss frame in another tutorial. We go to Add on top and under Text we see Title. We can enter the title and subtitle together and then highlight each line and adjust the font and font size using the text options at the bottom left while we are editing the text. It wouldn't matter if you enter the subtitle separately by clicking on Subtitle under Text on top. After we enter the text, click on the white space outside to turn off editing mode. We want to change the word final to finale, double click over the title to get into editing mode. Next we do a right click, we see the text style and text properties menus on the list of options. The text attributes we can change in the two menus are virtually identical. We open the text style menu. When we scroll down the list on the left we see all the different text we can customize such as title, tempo, dynamics, etc. On the right are different attributes you can change. We go back to the first selection title and click on a few of these. We can click on the apply button at the bottom to see how the changes look before OK to close the menu. The things that we can change for the different texts is exactly the same including the font, offset, alignment and frame. Here is one thing you might come across when using Muse Score. We change different things in the menu and when we try to adjust the font size on the top right and nothing happens. We try a few numbers and click on apply each time and the font size still looks the same. Click on OK at the bottom to accept the changes. Remember that a few minutes ago when we were entering the text for the title, we were in editing mode. We changed the font size with the text options available on the lower left. After making the changes the font size seemed to be fixed. Click on reset text to style at the bottom of the inspector panel and we see that the text size has changed to the number we put in in the text style menu. The other way to access the text style menu is under style on top and we find the option text. This is the same as doing a right click and selecting text style. We go to the bottom of the list where it says save style. What we can do with the default text styles is to save it to a file in the MSS format so that we can reuse the same styles in another piece. Close the menu. Next we'll look at the text properties menu and how it differs from the text style menu. We've seen that the attributes in the text style menu can be saved to a file and reused by another piece. The changes in the text properties menu only apply to this piece. 
Here we have several dynamic markings in the piece. We select a dynamic marking, do a right click and select text properties. We see that the menu looks the same as the text style menu except that we don't see the list of the different text types on the left that we can select. We see two options on top, style and reset to style. These two are the same as the ones in the inspector panel we will discuss shortly. We'll change a few things here. Note that we don't see the apply button near the bottom so we won't be able to see the changes we made until we click on OK to close the menu. Click on the white space to turn off highlighting to see the red color frame around the text. We see that the changes we made apply only to this dynamic marking. We select the text, click on the reset text to style on the right and we see that the dynamic marking has reverted back to the default text style. Next go to the text style menu and make a change to the font size and see what happens. When we click on OK, we find that every dynamic marking in the piece has changed. The next thing we'll look at is the button beside style under text in the inspector panel. When we click on different pieces of text, we see the name of the default text style comes up. What we can do is make any piece of text conform to the style of another piece of text. Suppose we select the heading, title would come up as the default style. We can change it to another default text style. Click on the button and choose a style. Different pieces of text were set to position in different places. We can move the text around. If we need to customize the text further, we can go to the text properties menu. Click on undo a few times to go back to the default style as before. Scroll down to the bottom of the piece. The last thing we may come across in a score is the copyright text at the bottom of a page. In earlier versions of Muse score you'd enter it as footer text. When you create a new score, you see a box for entering the copyright and the info will be stored under score properties. Unlike other pieces of text, the text style is fixed. If you need to change the copyright, you'd click on file on the top left and open the score properties menu. Here you see the word copyright written in full. Some people would prefer the shorthand symbol with the letter C and a circle around it. Depending on the computer operating system you're using, you may be able to enter the copyright character with shortcut keys. Close the menu for a minute. Double click on any piece of text to get into text input mode. Click on the lower left to open the special characters menu. Under the first tab common symbols we see the copyright character. Double click to add it in and close the menu. Highlight the character and do a cut to remove it. At the same time this will store the character in the computer's memory. Click on the white space to turn off highlighting. Go back to the score properties menu and paste the copyright character into the input box. Note that at the default setting the copyright appears at the bottom of every page when you have more than one page. If you want the text to appear only on the first page, you have to change the footer attributes. We close this piece and open one with more than one page. Scroll to the bottom and we see the copyright text. 
scroll across and we see that the copyright is on page 2 and 3 as well. Go to style on top and click on general. We will select the option header, footer, numbers from the list of formatting options. Under footer text we see six boxes. The top row is for the odd numbered pages and the bottom row is for the even numbered pages. The two boxes in the middle we see two of the same text with a dollar sign followed by a colon, then copyright, and another colon. This is the default command for placing the copyright text in all the odd and even numbered pages. When we move the pointer over one of the boxes, we see a yellow box appeared with a list of shorthand commands we can use. What we want is the copyright on the first page only so we remove what is in the middle box on the bottom row for even numbered pages. Click on apply and the copyright text on page 2 is gone. After the change, the copyright text will be on every odd numbered page starting with page 1. We change the text command to dollar sign and a capital C. If you find that the copyright is too low when it is printed, you'd place the input cursor after the last character of the command we just entered and do a line feed a few times. Click on OK. We see that the text has moved up from the bottom of the page so we should have no trouble printing the copyright line on paper. Scroll across and we see that the copyright appears only on the first page. Save the piece and close. In this section we are going to look at rehearsal marks. Rehearsal marks are used to reference sections of a piece by using letters of the alphabet. Besides using measure numbers, a piece of music with many pages that is played with an orchestra or ensemble usually has a rehearsal mark at the beginning of each section for quick reference. A conductor would use rehearsal marks as convenient starting points for the musicians to play together. A rehearsal mark always appears on top of the staff in bold text. The letter can be by itself or enclosed in a circle or a rectangle. The first rehearsal mark will be assigned the letter A, the next will be B, etc. in sequence. The first rehearsal mark doesn't always appear in measure 1 but can be further along in the music. A rehearsal mark will be added by Muse score enclosed in a rectangle with rounded corners at the default setting. Next we will open a piece and put some rehearsal marks into the score. There are two ways to add in a rehearsal mark. The first way we are going to select the note or rest where we need to add a rehearsal mark. We go to add, text, rehearsal mark. We see a rectangle appear on top of the staff and a text input box. We can enter any piece of text including numbers and special characters. By convention, we should use the capital letter A for the first rehearsal mark. We remove the text and click on the white space to cancel. The other way to add a rehearsal mark is to do a double click on the rehearsal mark button in the text menu under the palette. We select the same note again. When we activate the rehearsal mark the first time, we see that the letter A is automatically assigned. Move the tempo text out of the way. We scroll down to the next section of the piece. We select the note or rest at the start of the next section and double click on the button again. We see that the letter B is automatically added. If we need to change the letter later, we can do a double click to get into edit mode. The default text style looks ok. We can change it to a different font style if we wish. We move the pointer over a rehearsal mark. Do a right click and open the text style menu. We can try different settings such as changing the font, text size, horizontal positioning, etc. We click on apply to see how it looks before OK to accept the changes. We can change the frame from a box to a circle and then back to a box with a different radius for the corners to see which version looks better.
When we're done, save the piece. Next we will look at adding text to a piece of music for reference. We can add a piece of text into Muse score as either staff or system text. The text style for both is the same at the default setting. The main difference is that staff text goes on top of a staff immediately above the note or rest where it is added. System text will go on top of the top staff if you have two or more staffs as in a piano or an orchestral score. You can customize system and staff text with different text styles instead of leaving them at the default setting. We are going to add some text to the piece using staff text. There are two places we can go to add a piece of text. We click on the rest under the rehearsal mark B. We go to add, text and then staff. We see a text input box. Here we will add the text clarinet solo. Move it over a bit. We go to the beginning of the piece. We select the first note, double click on staff text and we get a piece of filler text we can type over. Here we highlight the text and type 2T over it. Move it over a bit. The score you see here is a part in an orchestral piece. We are going to open the full version and see the difference between system and staff text. Exit this piece and save. Here we see many instruments stacked on top of each other. We zoom in for a better view. We go to the instrument at the bottom and click on the first note. Then we double click on system text in the text menu. We see that a piece of text has been added above the top staff. We change it to 2T. Next we click on the same note again and double click on staff text. This time we see a piece of text added above the staff where the note is on. We also change it to 2T. We see that both the staff and system text look exactly the same at the default setting. We can do a right click over the text, open the text style menu and customize the text to look different. Save the piece for backup. In the next part of the tutorial, we're going to look into measure numbers, adding fingerings and lyrics into a score. Stay tuned.